Hey guys, it's me, it's Friday, and I'm back with another anatomy video. I'm Brittany Lee, the Bio Geek, and today I'll be covering the muscles of the lower arm. Now, this is another one of my favorite topics to cover because students really struggle with this a lot of times because there's so many muscles of the arm. However, I like to cover this because I've come up with a really awesome systematic way of organizing the different muscles and grouping them together. That way, whenever you're trying to recall them, you can replay the system in your head and get these answers right on your test. So I'll be breaking these muscles up into muscles of the extensor side, the dorsal side, muscles of the flexor side, the front or uh, anterior side, and then the muscles of the hand. So let's get started. So when I'm covering the muscles of the forearm, there's a very specific order I like to go in because the order really helps me organize the location of these muscles in my mind and helps me to be able to better recall them whenever I need to. So for this system, I always start closest to the elbow on the thumb side, that lateral side of the arm. This muscle is going to be called ter uh, pronator teres. Pronator teres is the muscle that allows us to pronate our arm, which is rotating it inward like that. Sitting next to that is going to be a flexor. So as a rule of thumb, on the uh, anterior or front side of the arm are going to be your flexor muscles. So right underneath uh, pronator teres, you're going to have this muscle whose tendon goes down to attach to the radius and it's going to move the carpals. This is going to be our flexor carpi radialis. Remember the radius bone is on the thumb side of the hand. So this would be our flexor carpi radialis. Sitting immediately medial to that, you're gonna have this muscle whose tendon attaches at the palm of the hand. This is gonna be our palmaris longus muscle. If you follow that medially, the next muscle you'll get to is another flexor who's gonna to attach to the ulna at the wrist. So this is gonna be another flexor because we're on the front side of the arm, flexor carpi ulnaris, because ulnaris, uh, the ulna is the bone on the pinky side of the arm. Underneath these muscles, you'll see this wider sheet of muscle whose uh, muscle fibers are situated underneath the palmaris longus and the flexor carpi radialis. This is going to be our flexor digitorum superficialis. Flexor digitorum superficialis is going to flex the digits of the hand. So we said pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, flexor carpi ulnaris, and then flexor digitorum superficialis sitting underneath. So now I'm gonna remove this layer and expose some of the deeper muscles of the forearm. So next, situated immediately underneath the flexor, um, the flexor digitorum superficialis is gonna be the flexor digitorum profundum. So the flexor digitorum profundum is going to be a more deep muscle to the flexor digitorum superficialis, and it will once again be a flexor of the digits of the hand. Situated just laterally to that, we're going to have our flexor pollicis longus. Now flexor pollicis longus is a muscle who will flex the thumb, pollicis means thumb, so this will flex the thumb, however, it's a long muscle because its muscle fibers begin on the forearm itself, not down here in the thumb and in the hand like we'll see with the brevis muscles. If you look down on the flexor side at the bottom, it's not a great view on these models, but you will have pronator quadratus, which is going to be a thin quadri quadrilateral shaped muscle whose fibers attach directly to both the radius and the ulna. That's going to allow for pronation specifically of the wrist. Pronator teres that we saw up here was going to allow for pronation of the upper portion of the forearm. And then our pronator quadratus helps us in pronating specifically the wrist. So now I want to go ahead and take you guys to the back side of the arm and start to go over a systematic way to learn our extensor muscles. So for our extensor muscles, I always start laterally and then work my way down to the more medial muscles. So starting at the very tippy top is going to be this muscle whose fibers originate at the upper arm 
and ends at the radius. This is gonna be our brachioradialis muscle. This one's also closest to the thumb on the dorsal or extensor side of the arm. So once you identify where coracobrachialis is, you can put the rest of these muscles in order and help to situate them in your mind. That way, whenever the test comes, you can recall them very easily. So we had coracobrachialis, I'm sorry, brachio, brachioradialis here. And then just underneath that, we're gonna have an extensor because we're on our extensor, the dorsal side. Extensor carpi radialis longus. Just underneath that is flexor carpi radialis brevis. So the flexor carpi radialis longus is going to be much longer than the flexor carpi radialis brevis, which is much shorter. Like to abbreviate is to shorten. A brevis would be a short, shorter muscle. Next, you're going to have an extensor muscle whose tendons attach to all of the digits of the hand. This is going to be our extensor digitorum here, located right in the center of the extensor side of our forearm. Now if you look just medially to that, you're going to see this tiny sliver of a muscle who's peeking out just laterally to our extensor digitorum. This guy here is going to be our extensor digiti minimi. Digiti minimi refers to the smallest digit of the hand, our pinky finger. So the extensor digiti minimi, whose tendon goes down to attach specifically to the pinky finger, is going to cause flexion of our pinky finger. If you move one over to the medial side, the next muscle that you'll run into is going to be our extensor carpi ulnaris. Extensor because we're on the extensor side of the arm, carpi because we're at the wrist, and then ulnaris because it is on the ulna. So extensor carpi ulnaris. The last of these muscles will be situated just above the extensor carpi ulnaris, and this is gonna be our anconius muscle. Anconius muscle sits just below the elbow that you see here. And one way I like to orient myself is when you look at the elbow here, just below it, you have the anconius, and just above it with fibers moving in the opposite diagonal direction is gonna be our medial head of the triceps. So these two muscles make sort of like a little elbow sandwich wrapping right around our elbow. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove these superficial extensor muscles so we can talk about some of our deeper extensor muscles. The first one we have here is gonna be the deepest of these muscles whose fibers wrap around both the radius and the ulna and this is going to be our supinator, whose function is to supinate the arm, which supinate is to externally rotate the forearm to make your palm face upward. If you look just below the supinator, what you're going to find is our AB, B as in boy, ductor pollicis longus. AB as in boy, ductor pollicis longus. Now I like to accentuate the B's and the D's because otherwise if I'm saying adductor abductor it gets a little tricky to understand. So the AB ductor, um, AB ductor pollicis longus is going to be this muscle here that runs all the way down to the thumb as you can see here. Just underneath our AB ductor pollicis longus is going to be our extensor pollicis longus who's going to be a little bit of a smaller muscle under here but it's going to attach to the top part of the thumb and allow for flexion i'm sorry it's going to allow for extension of that thumb so we said supinator a b is in boy ductor pollicis longus going to the thumb extensor pollicis longus also going to the thumb and then just on the side of that, I know it's super hard to see here, but this is going to be extensor indices. And so these muscles anatomically make sense to be oriented where they are. Your uh, uh, AB ductor pollicis longus is going to pull the thumb away from the rest of the hand. Our extensor pollicis longus is going to pull our muscle up. And then the uh, extensor indices is going to control extension specifically of the index finger. So now I want to go down and start with the muscles of the hand. There's quite a few, uh, not quite a few, but there's a few different muscles on the hand. So I'm going to start with the muscles of the thumb. And if you look at these muscles on the thumb, you can see that there are three different muscles. 
And if you go from lateral to medial, so farthest away from the rest of the hand to the rest of the hand, these muscles are the OAF muscles, O-A-F, opponent's pollicis, A B ductor pollicis brevis, brevis because it's the short one located just on the hand, and then flexor pollicis brevis here on the side. So we had opponent's pollicis, O, A B ductor pollicis brevis in the middle, and then flexor pollicis brevis more on the medial surface. So these are our OAF muscles. Situated just medially to the flexor, uh, I'm sorry, the, yes, the flexor pollicis brevis is going to be our AD, D as in dog, AD ductor pollicis. This muscle is going to contract to pull the thumb towards the rest of the hand like that. Next, this little skinny guy who's going to follow the tendons of the flexor digitorum is going to be our lumbricals. So the lumbricals are going to be individual muscles that line these tendons to help control movement of the fingers, of the digits. Now we have one last muscle, which is going to be located on the outside of the pinky, and this one's going to be called our A, B as in boy, ductor digiti minimi. This muscle is going to A, B, duct or pull away the pinky from the rest of the hand. Now, as you can see, mine is not very well developed because as I try to move it, my ring finger goes with it. All right, so I know this was a lot of muscles that I covered here, so I wanna run back a little quiz and see how many of these y'all remember because I think these uh, little quizzes at the end of my video really help to uh, test your knowledge on what you learned and help you to know where you need to focus your time on when you're going back to study. So let's see who we remember. Starting at the top here was the pronator teres. Underneath that, we had the Flexor carpi radialis, next to that, palmaris longus, and then on the pinky side, on the flexor side of the hand, flexor carpi ulnaris, nice. Underneath all of those tendons, the superficial muscle was the, I kind of gave it away, flexor digitorum superficialis, perfect. So let's go ahead and remove the superficial flexors to see our last three muscles, which were the Flexor digitorum profundum, perfect. Flexor pollicis longus, very good. Down here we had pronator quadratus, fantastic. All right, let's go over to the extensor side. So always remember extensor side is on the back side of the hand. Start with the muscle at the top. We had this one was the coracobrachialis yes always start with coracobrachialis because it has an unusual name and because it starts on the arm and it ends on the radius so brachioradialis underneath that we had the extensor carpi radialis longus which would make the smaller guy poking out underneath the extensor carpi radialis brevis for short perfect Continuing on in our little uh, our little list here, situated on the center of the posterior or back side of the arm was the extensor digitorum, perfect. This little tiny guy here we call the extensor digiti minimi, perfect. Two more here. On the pinky side we had extensor carpi ulnaris, and then just above that we called this one the and conius. Awesome. All right, let's remove our superficial extensors and get these last few muscles under here. This weirdly shaped one whose fibers attached directly to the radius and ulna was the supinator. Perfect. Underneath that, attaching to the outside of our thumb was the A B ductor pollicis longus. Perfect. This smaller guy here whose tendon attaches more to the top part of the thumb, extensor pollicis longus, perfect. And then this little tiny guy underneath here we call the extensor indices, perfect. All right, so let's keep going on the hand, finish up this video. On the outside of our hand, we had, our outside of our thumb, sorry, we called these three the Oaf muscles, right. So the first we had on the outside was the 
opponent's palaces. The one in the middle is the A, B as in boy, Dr. Palaces Brevis. Perfect. And then the one most medially on the thumb is the Flexor Palaces Brevis. Perfect. O, A, F. In between the thumb and the index finger attaching to the thumb, we had the A, D, Dr. Palaces. Perfect. This little skinny guy associated with the um, flexor digitorum tendon, the lumbricle, excellent. And then lastly, on the outside of the pinky finger was our A, B, ductor digiti minimi. Awesome. I know that was a lot of muscles, but you guys did a really great job calling those back. Alrighty guys, that's a wrap on the lower arm. I know these muscles were probably really difficult when you first started learning them, but I hope that my little organization method really helps you to keep these muscles straight in your own minds. That way when test day comes, you can recall this little system and get all of your test questions right whenever the time comes. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this with all your friends so that they can learn some anatomy too. Bye.